indestructible. That's what your soul is. Your soul is beyond time and space. It's beyond description. It's ineffable. But it definitely exists. It's been being written about since the beginning of written record. We've got understanding. We've got wisdom. They go hand in hand. And they definitely are incorporated in your relationship to your soul. You know, when you awaken to the realization of something beyond yourself, you start existing on more than just one plane of thought and awareness. You start existing on planes such as the spirit, the mental, the physical realms. Those are just certain three that we typically experience in a third dimension of consciousness. But there are many dimensions and there are many layers of perception you can work towards. See, I'm just going on and on and on and on about really nothing. Because everything I say, really, the only weight it has is the weight I give to it for my own awareness or the weight you receive it in. How you decide to take this information or this thought pattern or this unique perspective and work it into your own life. You are worthy of being loved. You're worthy of loving your soul. You're worthy of expressing yourself in a spiritual manner without all the harsh criticism that comes along with it. Because you are a spiritual being. You are an entity of consciousness, an uh, essence of awareness that has incarnated into this reality, into this fleshy vehicle that is a body. And it has worth and it has meaning. It's not just a random throw of the dice of the cosmos that decided that you'd be here right now, today, like this, how you are now. It's because the universe has love and compassion enough to express itself through a unique vessel such as you, a unique perspective of what the cosmos really is, what you are, of what the entirety of this expression consists of. <laughs> You're worth the time and effort that it takes to be open-minded enough to receive these messages as I share with you in your own informed, unique way. And it's lovely and I appreciate it. I'm not condemning anyone for their thought patterns. I can only appreciate what they have to bring to a unique perspective. But I don't you know, encourage anything that has to do with suffering or pain. The himzas, ahimsa, known violence, knowing when you're being violent to yourself or others through your practices. So choosing practices that are not only not harm, harming you, but not harming anyone else. That means loving compassionately the reality that's around you, as it is, without encouraging so many shifts, but just encouraging the growth of what is, of life, of reality, without all the stresses of trying to shift it on your own. Well, you know, that's just a little spiel for the day. Hasn't been a, it's been a little while since I said anything on here, so figured I'd give you all a little clue into where I've been. Wish you all the best this day and every other. Namaste. Oh, did you hear that? It's a train. <laughs>